It's time to cook like candy. So I'm about to get this macaroni cracking. Once your water comes to a boil, sprinkle a little salt in there and the salt helps to um, eliminate the starch from the pasta because you don't want it to kind of get gooey and mushy. And it also flavors. I think it does more flavoring than anything. But you got the water boiling. And I'm going to pop in my elbow macaroni. Ty does not prefer elbow macaroni when we're making mac and cheese. What you prefer, Ty? Cavatappi noodles. She loves cavatappi noodles. Oh, cavatappi noodles! It's very hard to find them. We um, don't have cavatappi noodles, okay? But when you do, y'all, just try it one day. You feeling bold? I promise it's the best texture. It just captures all the creamy cheese. It's so amazing. Cavatappi noodles is great for spaghetti. However, we're using... Spaghetti! You, I'm sorry, macaroni and cheese. You know, I be, I'm old. But anyway, um, we're going to let this, um, we're going to let these noodles boil all the way through. And once they boil, I'm going to strain them and I will show you how I'm making my macaroni and cheese today. Cheese to good macaroni is do not overcook it, okay? You want it to be al dente, al dente. However, it's going to cook more once you mix it in the sauce. It's going to go in the oven. Don't overcook that macaroni. I'm going to say this is good enough for me. And I'm going to remove it from the heat and the water right away. Because you can leave it in the same hot water and it will continue to cook. And then you're going to have some mush. You have some mushy macaroni. I have. Ugh, yeah, it was drop. nasty. I don't remember. What was that place at? <laughs> don't name drop. Don't name drop. I strained my macaroni. It is so pretty. And I'm going to let that sit for a second while I prepare my roux. I'm not going to touch it. Okay? I'm not even going to rinse it. I just drained it. Why don't I rinse it? Because the salt already knocked off from the pasta noodle. I don't want to rinse it. This is very perfect. And um, the remaining starch that's on it allows it to stick to so the So I'm going to do a roux for my um, mac and cheese. I... Put the butter in this pot and I actually have some. I'm going to drop just a little bit of olive oil in there because I don't want it to not be enough. Just let them start going together a little bit. You know, mix them in. Let that olive oil get a little warm like that butter was. And now what I have right here is a mixture of um, garlic and onion. Not a lot at all. This in this big old thing, you ain't going to even notice it. It's going to disappear. But I want to let that just a little so that that um, oil butter can get the flavors of the onion garlic. So I'm going to let those sweat in that heat for a second. Not too long though, because the longer you wait, the more it's up. But long enough for them to become acquainted. Okay, so they have become acquainted. I don't want them to start browning and turning black because then it's going to turn my macaroni and cheese real black. So here I'm going to hit it with some flour. How much flour? I don't know. How much do you think this is, Ty? Maybe like one fourth. A fourth cup? Mm-hmm. Uh, more like a tablespoon. A tablespoon. You think it was more than a tablespoon? Yes. Maybe like cream sauce for your Alfredo. Once I get that to brew in a little, and just enough so all of them can transform the same flavors. Cheese cream sauce. Transform the same flavor. Cheese cream sauce for your Alfredo. Once I get that to brew in a little. And just enough so all of them can transform the same flavor. Get a little brown on me. But guess what I'm doing? I'm adding some heavy whipping cream. Because now I am making a cheese roux. Or a cheese gravy, whatever you know what you was raised. Okay, so I'm gonna make a nice cream, heavy whipping cream. And I usually will grab a whisk, but um I didn't grab one. It's okay. Let all of this get blended because I don't want anything to get sticky on me. And here comes the fun part because now that I added that cheese, I'm gonna come back with some parmesan. And I don't plan on for nothing it. else. I bought this for a different dish. But I like to use what I have because there's no need of wasting money. So, bam. All that Parmesan cheese gets added in there, okay? Mix this until it's well blended. Until all of those cheese flakes have dissolved. But 
that ain't all y'all because we need more feed in this room in order to make it do what it do so i have some sour cream and i like the flavor of sour cream but i'm gonna add the sour cream actually last because sour cream is still real heavy unlike heavy whipping cream um i do have this parmesan cheese in this container that i'm gonna add some to as well because that other Parmesan cream, oh, look at it, y'all. It's already close to where I need to be. Ain't even close to where I need to be. So I'm going to reduce this heat all the way to low because the last thing you want is for your cheese to burn, baby. We don't want that. Of this uh, Kobe and Monterey Jack. But Ty bought some Kobe and Monterey Jack slices the other day. What you bought those for? Your crab rolls? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the fridge and grab a couple of slices of that Kobe and Monterey Jack cheese. But I'm going to whisk this until it blends. So when it starts to get thick on me, some people can add milk. I'm going to add half and half because what milk will do when milk starts to cook, it dries out. So I don't want my steak. bakes. So I'm going to hit this with a little half and half. I have more heavy whipping cream, but it's creamy as I want it. So I'm going to hit this with some half and half to thin it out some. A little half and half, let's see, to thin it out some. And then I'm going to start to whip that half and half in because I want it to be a thick, creamy cheese, but I don't want it to be too thick right now because I want it to be able to enjoy it. So now I'm coming back with some more Monterey and Kobe. Gotta grab it out the fridge. And these are just some really big slices that we got from these um, are some cheese slices of Kobe and Monterey Jack. Um, this is a whole slice. I don't think I need much. That's two. I'm just going to add three slices of this because I ain't never did this one before. Maybe four. Don't judge me. Hopefully it melts. Oh, if it don't melt, oh well. We still going to eat it, ain't we, Ty? Yep. So let me try to get this cheese melted in. Ultimately, I just wanted Kobe and Monterey Jack. And all we had was the slices for her stuff. So once I get this cheese melted down... I'll be back with the next cheese for my macaroni and cheese. My next cheese is going to be this Mexican style cheese because that's all I got. Mm -mm. I got you. Oh, what else did I get? My Do brother? I got sharp cheetah? Sharp. Sharp. Yeah, sharp. you got sharp, got sharp cheddar. cheddar. Yeah. Mom, we bought that from Sam. Okay, so I'm going to add this Mexican style cheese in here. And it's a Mexican blend, Monterey, cheddar, queso. And Asiago. I'm stirring with my least dominant hand. Don't cuff me. <laughs> Just keep stirring the cheese, baby. Just keep stirring the cheese. Ooh, I don't know how much longer my arm getting tired. Well, I'm almost done. If I can find this sharp cheddar, that you say it was about. If it's not any in the, it's in the drawer. Um, so yeah. I will add keep it on look for none. my sharp cheddar. <laughs> I want to put Mexican cheese in some macaroni. Add no, I always do. You just don't know. Mm -mm. So I'm going to add my sharp cheddar. Macaroni if it don't have sharp cheddar in it. I'm just saying. Girl, you got and I like to top it with my sharp cheddar, okay? I'm and an arm tied. Last cheese of the day. Guess what it is, Taff? That Gouda. That Gouda. And Gouda has such a sharp I'm not putting a lot in there. No, no. I put so much Gouda in macaroni. It was a disaster. Yeah, you don't want to put too much Gouda. Gouda tastes like bacon. Mm. Usually I want, you know what, I'm going to actually shred it. Because Gouda actually is a thicker cheese and it takes longer to uh, melt. Yes, it does. So annoying. Ain't nobody got time for that. So this is your get off all the cheese. Do I need some more half and half in there? Is it thick? It's very thick. I think that's enough now, Candy. Oh, no. Stop yeah. playing with me, Tayana Marie. <laughs> Don't make me say your whole name. Mm -mm. I mean. All right, so get this Gouda in there. And the Gouda has, tastes like bacon, honestly. Smoked Gouda tastes like it got some type of smoked bacon in there, but we don't eat pork, so it's the closest thing to it. All right, I'll take over. I have half. So my root is going really well. I'm going to add a little half and half because I don't want my, my cheeses to start oiling up. And because I added that half and half in there, it's real thick. That cheese ain't playing no game. I got to break it up some. Whoopsie. You acting wild like me. Yeah, my daughter. Not too much. yoked up. 
Did you record all of it? We should start. It just started. Oh, so I cracked the egg in these noodles. Oh my gosh! And all I'm doing is spinning the egg in my dry noodles before I dry apply noodles. my to my cheese sauce because I want them to be nice and eggy because the egg helps it to stay together once it bakes. That's all y'all missed while we wasn't recording. Okay. Before I make any moves with my cream sauce, I'm just hit this with a little sour cream. Because it helps it with that extra creaminess when it comes out that oven. Sometimes it has that super duper creamy going on, right? And I got that sour cream in there. And it kind of helped me loosen up that cheese exactly how I like it. Then I come back with these eggs. I'm sorry, these egg noodles. This noodle. Knock them in there. Shit, I just touched my pot. Oh, sorry for cursing. Get all my eggs and ugh, my pasta in there. Sorry, Taffy, drop stuff on the floor. It's okay. All right. So, mac and cheese is in the cheese. And now we got to make the mac and cheese mac and cheese. Y'all like how that sounds, don't y'all? <laughs> so, I'm going to just go ahead and spin this into all that together. And it becomes one happy family. Sometimes I like to do it in the pan. Sometimes I don't. Yes, sir. But I'm going to get this mac and cheese together. So you get all that cheese blended in your mac and cheese. And my pan, and I hit the bottom of my pan with some regular sharp cheddar cheese. And my grandmama taught me that. She just told me that it helps it stick to the bottom of the pan if you line it with cheese. Is that true? Who knows? Because it's all... In five, four, three, two one we won't ever know if that cheese helps to stick to the bottom because it's all melted now so i get all my cheese sauce out it smells so good and you really don't have to flavor it past this so i didn't add any additional salt and pepper because all of this flavor from this cheese plus don't forget i had that garlic and that onion base in this sauce all that yeah you gonna take it can i do a breadcrumb top and tie Sure. You're gonna let me do it? Mm -hmm. You've never let me do it before. <laughs> I don't wanna do it. I no, I'm not gonna do it today. I, 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 heard, I want this just as it is. I've been asking her if I could do a breadcrumb topping on my macaroni and cheese for years and she's always said no. I like to touch every part. Of it just gives it that extra golden brown crisp once it bakes. 85, covered up and I'll bake it until it's brown. So this will be nice and ready. It'll be set. Sometimes we cut into it too fast and it's real creamy. Cover it loosely because if you don't, your foil will definitely snatch your cheese off. So I just like to pull it tight to cover it loosely. Yikes. I get the picture. What am I doing? See y'all when it's done. Just like that. I just uncovered it. This mac and cheese is baked, baby. But... I'm old school. I'm not taking it out the oven until these edges get a little toasty. But I bet you this goodness. Is and I only got these couple of pieces that came off on my foil. And guess who's gonna eat them? Me. I ain't gonna eat that. That's my final presentation.